All right, so let's talk about the input configuration screen on Maximizer 5 stuff. Kind of walk you through all the different menus here and tell you a little bit about each one and maybe that'll help you on your setup for your Maximizer 5. Uh, so you see here on the first screen is a setup screen uh, where you, you see output one and two. Uh, output one and two are uh, the two big wires coming out of the Maximizer 5. The blue wire will be output one, the red wire would be output two. Outputs three and four can be used to trigger relays or you can purchase additional drivers if you need to progress uh, stage three or stage four or output three, output four. If you don't want to progress output three and four, you don't have to have an additional driver. If you just want to use it to activate a stage, it'll activate a relay uh, without an additional driver. Or you can also use output three or four to control a water methanol pump, in which case you would have to have the water methanol pump driver, which is also available on our website or through a dealer. Uh, next tab is RPM. RPM is not a required feature. The only required feature on the input config screen is the TPS feature. Even if you don't have a TPS sensor, um, you have to have the, the small blue wire, which is the TPS input, wired in to either a throttle position switch or a micro switch. Uh, so uh, that is the only feature that's required. All these other features are always optional. Uh, so you can have, we'll talk about RPM. RPM has, if you enable it, you can do many different multipliers to make it match whatever type of ignition system you have. Um, some guys even run it off of a cam sensor. Uh, most of your cam sensors um, are compatible. The pulses they put out are compatible to read RPM uh, through the maximizer. So if you're on a diesel pickup or a direct injected vehicle um, or something that has a really noisy ignition, uh, there are other ways other than actual ignition to get RPM. Um, what the RPM does is it allows you to turn the nitrous off below a certain RPM and off above a certain RPM. So it allows you a window of RPM in which to have the nitrous enabled. Um, your out of range ignore time is once your RPM is outside of the range you have set, that is how long it will take to turn the nitrous off. Uh, we also have an activation delay, which is great for automatic cars. Um, it'll delay the nitrous during the shift. Uh, so if your car takes uh, two tenths of a second to shift gears or make the shift, uh, you can delay the nitrous from the time it goes without outside the RPM window um, that's the delay it would see before it turns back on once it's inside the RPM window. So you can allow your, your car to make the, make the shift uh, without having the nitrous on or taking the risk of damaging the transmission by spraying through the shift. Uh, <clears throat> so next we have TPS. TPS is very simple. Um, most of your nitrous systems you want to only operate at wide open throttle. Uh, so you would set uh, closed throttle and open throttle voltage. Um, if this maximizer was connected to the vehicle right now, you would see an, a live data readout here of what it would say your TPS is. Um, you can set these, they're user adjustable. Uh, this is kind of a universal, will mo work on most zero to five volt uh, cars. Um, if you are using this with a micro switch, um, these settings would also work. Uh, anything above 4.5 volts would be wide open throttle. Um, out of range ignore time works the same as it did on RPM. If it goes outside of your TPS range or falls below wide open throttle, it would, after it's outside of the wide open throttle range for 0.1 seconds, it would then turn the nitrous off. Um, map or manifold absolute pressure can be used two ways. Um, a lot of guys will run a map sensor to monitor vacuum in the oil pan. So if they see a ring flutter, which would cause a, a variance 
in pressure in the oil pan or vacuum in the oil pan. Uh, you could turn the nitrous off. Uh, that way you don't end up hurting anything. Uh, if you see signs of detonation that way, that's, that's a really good way, not only to, to turn the nitrous off if you see detonation, but also this input would also data log, as any of these inputs will, they'll, they'll all data log. And I'll show you that um, later on, probably in another video, uh, <clears throat> how the data logging works. So you, this kind of works the same as a TPS as far as your range. Um, you can have an upper and lower limit, and out of range ignore time also works the same as far as the delay between when, if your map sensor goes outside of this range, how long it would take to turn the nitrous off. Uh, the map sensor, we have three configured sensors here. Uh, they're all GM sensors. They're pretty easy uh, to locate. We have the part numbers listed for you. Or if you needed a, a different sensor or wanted to use a different sensor, you can set up your own sensor uh, by setting these pressures to read uh, pretty much any, any pressure you want. I think it, the max it goes is 300 PSI. So um, you can get pretty crazy with the pressures. Uh, some of the diesel guys will use this um, to only spray at low boost levels. Um, that's always a possibility. So uh, different ways you can use the map sensor setting. Again, not a required setting that you have to set up, but uh, definitely a great feature to use if you wanted to. Uh, moving on to air fuel ratio or lambda. Um, this is also a, a window input feature uh, where you can have the nitrous uh, only work within a certain air fuel ratio. So if your car goes too rich or too lean, uh, you could turn the nitrous off uh, before you hurt any parts. Um, you can use this with pretty much any aftermarket wideband controller. Uh, you can predefine the sensors that your wideband uses. Um, almost every wideband on the market will give you the scale uh, that the sensor, uh, what the voltages are and what those lambdas are for the particular wideband controller that you're using. So um, this is user adjustable as well. This is, they come preset at the most common, uh, which is I think AEM and Innovate. Uh, the most common brands, uh, these settings would normally match up with their factory settings and read air fuel ratio correctly. And then you could also set your upper and lower lambda limits on um, when you want the nitrous to be engaged um, and cut it off at a too rich or too lean setting. Uh, speed. The Maximizer 5 will read speed and you can actually set a ramp um, to ramp nitrous in by speed or you can have the nitrous come on only during a certain speed, uh, speed range. In this case it would be anything above 10 miles an hour uh, and up to 100 miles an hour. If it falls outside of that range, it would turn the nitrous off. Um, you can set your speed multiple ways. The most common, I would say, is an ABS sensor. Uh, most newer vehicles have an ABS sensor. You can also use a drive shaft sensor. Um, or a lot of times, if you have an electronic speedometer in the vehicle, uh, you can tie into that electronic uh, speed sensor coming from the uh, mile per hour gauge and pick up a, your speed that way. So, um, moving on to nitrous pressure. Um, if your nitrous pressure is too high or too low, uh, you can uh, keep the Maximizer 5 from engaging uh, if it is too high or too low. This The Max 5 can also control a bottle heater. Um, if you go to tuning and configuration, there's a heater control option you'd have to enable. Uh, the heater control will activate a relay to turn the bottle heater on or off. Uh, you can set a desired pressure and it would maintain that pressure. Uh, um, you can also have one of the other additional inputs, which we're about to talk about, uh, turn on or off the bottle heater. Uh, but in most cases, you won't use those. You would only use the heater control and set the desired pressure again only designed to turn a relay on or off to activate the heater you wouldn't want to connect the heater directly to this output because it will 
uh, damage the controller because it can't handle the amp draw from powering the heater on its own. Uh, last three things here, inputs A, B, and C, um, they're all set up the same. Uh, so you can have three additional inputs here. These are all would be user-defined sensors only used for data logging. Um, these will not show if you have a handheld screen, they won't show on the screen um, and they will not affect uh, what your nitrous system is doing. Uh, these are only used for data logging. So, and these can be pre-configured for any zero to five volt sensor. Uh, you can name them. Um, so if you wanted to look at uh, vacuum and you already had a map sensor and you wanted to use you're using your map sensor for boost and you wanted to look also look at vacuum here just to data log it um, if you want to look at vacuum in the oil pan uh, for example to check for detonation you could set that sensor up here uh, you can name the sensor detonation or vacuum um, <clears throat> and this would show when you go to the data acquisition screen uh, which we'll talk about in a future video because we're almost out of time on this one. Uh, you can set three sensors this way. So if you had three different sensors, uh, you could set them all up uh, to data log different things. It would all have to be a zero to five volt sensor. Um, all used for data logging. Um, data logging, I think, is one of the best features uh, of the Maximizer 5. Uh, you can't hardly buy a data logger for what the max 5 costs and not only does it data log it also will control your nitro system so i think that's it for the inputs uh, we'll move on we'll do another video talking about the ramp types uh, how to set the ramps up and what uh, each feature does in the ramp